Right, I'm just doing a video on uh, P3. This exam is the 2023 January exam for P3. Um, I'm setting up these videos for P3 a little bit differently. So what I've done is I've already done the answers on the right here. And on the left, I'm going to go through them in more detail. So on the right, we have the answers fully um, completed. So I'm just going to scroll through that. Scroll down. So anybody, if you just uh, want to look at the answers, you don't even need to listen to the video. You can skip to the next bit. So this is question one. Question one it gives you a certain function and it says to um, write down the range of the function f. So we have a, oh, word is three. So we have a function f of x, some sort of function. And I always rewrite it this way around just because I like to see what I'm doing. So I know that this a value here is negative. That's a negative um, a value. And that means that we have a frowny face because this looks like a parabola or a quadratic function. Um, so we know that it's going to be a frowny face in that direction. Um, it's asked for the range. Range has to do with the y's. So it's saying um, what y's exist. What y's exist for this function? Well, from here down, y exists. Okay, y exists from from the turning point um, downwards. So that's all we need to really look at is what y's exist from the turning point downwards. So the thing that we need is what y uh, do we have at that turning point? Um, so there's a few ways to get the turning point. Uh, obviously, using calculus would be the easiest way. We know that the first derivative equals zero at our max and our min. Um, this is a maximum point. So it's a maximum turning point. So when I say turning point, I also mean max or min of the function. So we can take the second derivative, excuse me, the first derivative equal to zero. So first we have to get our, our first derivative of this function. Our first derivative of this function, um, well, we have negative uh, plus nine. So uh, we take this two minus one and, uh, oops, sorry. First bring it, first bring it down and then minus one. So we end up with minus two x and the nine falls away because the x would be um, x zero. So the, there's nothing there. So we have minus two x uh, as our first derivative. Uh, we know that at our turning point, we let this equal to zero. And as you can see straight away, our, our x is gonna be zero. So we divide both sides by negative two, x is simply equal to zero. So this is one way you can do it. Look here, um, another way is to know that the turning point x value is minus b over 2a. So just quickly explain what I mean by that. Um, this function is in the form um, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a quadratic function. So as you can see, we have no b value there, or, or to put it in another way, b is 0. So this is just going to be 0 over 2a. And anything, that's just going to equal 0. So you could straight away have seen that x was going to equal 0 there. OK, so those are the two ways to do it. If x is 0, then we can sub this back into the original um, f of x to find y. So um, when x is 0, then you end up with something that looks like this. So as you can see, uh, 0 squared is just 0. So our y equals 9. We end up with a turning point or a max or a min that is zero nine. Okay, so this is the information we need to get the range, and we we wanted the range in the um we can see back from our picture. Oopsie. That the that means that this point here 
is zero nine. And that means the Y part of that point is nine or less. So in order to get nine or less, we write it in the math. We don't write nine or less. We write that our Y has to be less than or equal to nine. And this is our final answer here. So that's what they're looking for. Um, just for P3, you should know that Y is exactly the same thing as saying the function. So our final answer should ideally be written in this form. Okay. That's number one A. Let's look at number one B. Number one B asks us to um, find the value of f of g of one of five. Okay, so this is just a function in a function. So I immediately rewrite this like this, uh, f of g of 1.5. And you can do this all in one step. Um, if you look at your original functions here, we have f, f and g. So I just take my f of x and I stick g of x inside of it. So we have nine minus, here's where our g of x is gonna go, where the x used to be. Um, but they've given an actual value for x inside there as well. So we end up with this whole thing. This you can work out by hand or you can, you know, a little bit of working. There's no unknowns there. So you can put the whole thing in your calculator if you like, whichever method suits you. I worked it out a bit over here. I did like first did put the square in and everything. And my answer came to 135 over 16. Always just check. Uh, if there's anything that asks for like forms or anything, they want the, the value, so I leave it in this form. That's good. Um, g to the minus one, number C. Oopsie. This is a inverse of G. So our original G of X looked like this. And we just want to inverse it. So obviously two steps for inverting. Uh, just check your restrictions. X has to be larger than or equal to zero because X is in the denominator. Okay. Um, we just got the C here. So if you want to just look at the equation over there, but in the meantime over here. So first step for invert is you, um, you switch X, Y, and then you make Y the subject. So switch x, y, remember that g of x is just another way of writing y. So it will be x is equal to three over two x plus y. Now we have to make y the subject. So that's number one done. I make y the subject. And so if you want to make y the subject, I first want to just bring the bracket over. So times both sides by, oopsie, by two y plus one equal to three. Um, but just to, you could have just, if you know how to do this quickly, you can just switch this, okay? But now we divide both sides by X. So divide both sides by X, just this, this was by times both sides by two Y plus one over here, just to have that written. And um, the x's on this side cancel out. So we have 2y plus 1 is equal to 3. Um, now there's nothing outside the brackets. So the brackets can fall away. 2y plus 1 equals to 3 minus 1 of both sides um, and divide by 2. So y is equal to actually um, what did I do? I lost my x. Whoops. Do, 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 do. Fix, fix, fix. Aha. Okay. So two, I have two, two, two. Yeah. There we go. So it would be minus one over there. Okay. So where were we? Had a bit of a boo boo. Three over X. 
minus one divided both sides by two. So it'll be three over two X minus one over two. And Y is equal to three over two X minus a half. Um, in your, I've just done it quickly there, but your final step should look like this. You want to obviously show that this is G to minus one Perfectly. Okay. That is number one. Just go back to the question. Check everything that they asked for. Perfect. It 